can you make some some changes so that 30 days later you take your shirt off or put on a bikini like you can tell you can tell that i did something Yes, you can. I don't want people to think that it's not possible. I think it's very much so possible. And again, the the healthier you are, the healthier your metabolism is, okay, the the higher amount of calories you can consume and not put body fat on, the the more muscle mass you have on your body, the I think the the more dramatic this can be. I don't want to go too extreme with that either, right? right? Because then we're in a predicament where we're not fueling our our muscle. We're not preserving muscle at that point, too, which you want to be able to preserve if that's the allure of it is to be able to, you know, highlight your muscles more and reduce body fat, not necessarily overall weight. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can visibly change your body in 30 days. That's right. 30 day transformation. All right. Preface. Uh, the hustle. I know. <laughs> I know. Now that we've hooked big, them. Big asterisk. <laughs> yeah. Big asterisk here. First off, um, there's a reason why we don't do episodes like this, because this really doesn't really apply to the vast majority of people out there. Um, it's a, it's really a terrible strategy or thought process for most people who are looking to lose you know, 20 pounds or improve their health or fitness. This whole like, I'm going to do everything I can for 30 days, sets you up for failure afterwards. Almost 100% of the time. Yeah. So I want to be really, really clear about that. There that, are some potential applications. Yeah, that that being said, if you um, consistently work out, you, your metabolism is in a, a very healthy place. Now, what do you mean by healthy? Well, uh, a good amount of calories for your body weight. So if you are... And if you're a 130 to 150 pound female and you're eating 1700 plus calories, you're in a pretty good place. Right. Um, if you're 1500 calories and, uh, you know, maintaining your weight there, you probably need to focus on reverse dieting. So you want to have a, at least you want to have some room to go down. That, yeah. That's yeah. the point. Cause one of the things I obviously, one of the tips in here is going to be restrict calories. And we're probably going to recommend somewhere between the 500 to thousand mark. And so if you're going to recommend that they need to be somewhere in a healthy place that you're not now, you know, starving the body of nutrients because you're so low a calorie. So that's yeah. important. And also having like a, a fundamental sort of baseline of training experience. Right. right. Like, so that's definitely because if you are going to like really condense this goal down to a limited amount of time of 30 days, you know, this is where like somebody in that situation where I do have, I'm pretty experienced in the gym. Maybe I've taken a little bit of time off, but um, I, I can do these compound lists. I can do uh, a lot of things that will contribute towards that uh, at, a, at a more intensified kind of pace. And yeah. we just did an episode, you know, for the, so the people that feel like, oh, well, what's this? This is a worthless episode for me. Well, if you feel like that after us prefacing it with that, go over and watch the 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 start the New Year's one that we did. What was the title of that one, Doug? Whatever the title of the the New Year's episode we did, I think is a, is an excellent place to start for a majority of people just getting started on their journey, yeah. or one of our reverse dieting ones. But for somebody who's you know he- healthy and been training consistently, and they're like, all right, I'm gonna I want to turn it up the mm-hmm. next thirty days. We've listed some of the I think key rocks to focus on in order to be successful at that. Yeah. And this is, again, this is considering you're not. A, so the, the problem is that the person who tends to get attracted to this, oh my God, I can visibly it's usually the wrong it. person. It's the, the beginner. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to get in shape. This is how I want to start. This is, that's the wrong person. This also is going to be kind of a waste of time. If you have a lot of body fat to lose, yeah. you're not gonna be able to do much in a month to visibly change your body with, uh, you know, by doing anything, if you have like 30 pounds to lose, but if you're like relatively lean, you can make some changes in a month to where you can actually tell when you look in the mirror. So that episode that uh, Adam was referring to was uh, 19, uh, 1967. So 1967, that'll give you better long-term advice. But that being said, if you're relatively lean, you've got some experience, you know how to work out, your metabolism, you're, you're eating a good amount of calories, you kind of know what your maintenance is at, by the way, that's also important, then can you make some, some changes so that... 30 days later, you take your shirt off or put on a bikini. Like you can tell, you could tell that I did something. Yes, you can. Now I do want to be clear. The most body fat, pure body fat, because you can lose more on the scale. It doesn't mean lost body fat. The most body fat you'll probably lose in this month. If you do this right, that you should aim for is like four pounds, maybe six pounds at the most. I know some people say two pounds a week, eight pounds is pushing it. 
but I'd say 46 pounds. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, I, I would challenge that. And the way I would challenge that is the, the healthier you are and the better metabolism and more muscle mass you have, the more dramatic that number would be. So, I mean, I'm I, mean I, I, I was, escape. I was cutting uh, 10, 15 pounds of fat in a month's time when I was competing, but I also had a roaring metabolism, I had a ton of muscle on my body. I had a very high caloric intake. Yeah. But you wouldn't, you would be an outlier though, right? That wouldn't be the average. No, I'm not. That's what I just said. Yeah. I said, I'm not, but that, I didn't want, I don't want people to think that it's not possible. I think yeah. it's very much so possible. And again, the, the healthier you are, the healthier your metabolism is. Okay. The, the higher amount of calories you can consume and not put body fat on, the the more muscle mass you have on your body, the I think the the more dramatic this can be. Yeah. I think your target is a good, safe place that's smart and healthy for the average person who just is a you know say weekend warrior, I guess, or like uh, you know they work out, but yeah, they're not relatively like consistent, yeah. but not like. But if you're if you're pretty hardcore in this, I mean, you can you can you can move now, the needle. Now that's you just said something. So what's going to be vitally important because we're dealing with such a short window of time is going to be consistency. This means if you have to do everything yeah, right, no room for error all the time. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you could forget the 30-day target. Every screw has to be tight. Yeah, and then you can give yourself a 60, 90-day target, 120-day target. But if you look at 30 days, like one weekend out with your friends doing whatever. So this is where I I do like the 30-day type of quote-unquote challenge or the like setting doing an episode like this is it is fun to go like, hey, for 30 days, I'm really going to – I'm going to sacrifice a lot. I'm going to sacrifice the other things in health, relationship going out with my friends and taking the weekend off this or sleeping in on these days. Like this is like kind of cool to to measure and see, okay, if I really say I'm all about making a change physically – uh, what can I actually accomplish if I if everything else falls after that goal for 30 days? This is what it would look yeah. like, in my opinion. All right. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. This is the first MAPS program, the most popular MAPS program, great for building muscle, boosting the metabolism, burning body fat. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment... We'll notify you in the comment section that you won free access to MAPS Anabolic. We also put together these three workout program bundles. All of them give you up to nine months of planned workouts, every single one of them. They're also all $300 or more off, so huge discounts. If you're interested in taking advantage of the January special, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, so step one, obviously, you're going to have to cut calories, and they're going to have to come down below your maintenance. So maintenance is how many calories you need to consume for your body to stay the same. So if you know what that number is, then you want to cut between 500 to 1,000 calories below that. Now, who goes to 1,000? Who goes to 500? The higher your calories are, the more you can go down. If you're at 1,700 calories, I would not recommend you cut 1,000 calories. Now you're left with 700 calories. That's not a good place. But if you're at 3,000 calories or 3,500 calories, you're a big dude and you got a lot of muscle and a fast metabolism, can you cut 1,000 calories below maintenance just for a 30-day period? You can. So it's 500 to 1,000. And what this does is when you go below maintenance, now your body's forced to tap into its energy reserves during this 30-day period. This is what causes the body fat. If you don't do this part, none of the other stuff we say is going to make a big difference. You have to have that calorie cut in order to see the fat loss. Uh, and you don't want to go time. too extreme with that either, right. right? Because then we're in a predicament where we're not fueling our, our muscle. We're not preserving muscle at that point too, which you want to be able to preserve if that's the allure of it is to be able to, you know, highlight your muscles more and reduce body fat, not necessarily overall weight. I, I actually would, the way I would structure this would be if it's a 30 day goal, I would actually figure out what's the lowest I would want to allow myself on the 30th day. And I would kind of reverse engineer that mm. meaning like you're not going to go like that right off the gates. Right. And yeah. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to pick the number so and then stay at that up. for 30 days. Every week I'm going to adjust this. Yeah. So every week I'm going to go a little bit lower, a little bit lower. So let's say I'm at like, you know, where, where I was when I was competing 5,000 calories and I'm in 30 days, how, and I, I don't want to go lower than let's say 2,500. I'm going, okay, so how would I want that to look? Okay. I'm going to go a thousand calories and then 500 and then 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And five, like, like that's, and every week I'm going to do that. And I'm actually, and I hope you don't mind, but I want to pair this with uh, what I like to do at the same time, which is the, your eighth tip 
which is the steps. And so I'm actually dropping about 500 to 1,000, depending on the week, every week. And then I'm also increasing steps and this to, is this, together. This because what that does, just to be clear, what that does by increasing activity is you're moving the calorie burn target up. So now you have the deficit where you want. So let's say you cut 700 calories, but now you're burning an extra 300 calories. You now you're a thousand calorie deficit. Right. So you can do through activity and through through nutrition. Right. right. And I like doing both of them at the, at the same time. I feel like I get more of a dramatic response, and I don't have to drop drop calories so hard and still create that deficit. I don't have to do crazy hours of activity. I just need to increase my movement and be tracking it, paying attention to it. So I think, and I know you put numbers on here with the steps with the, I think you did 10, 12. Yeah. You did 10, 12, 14, 16,000. What always happens when we do an episode like this, someone's like, well, what do I do if I'm already at 14,000 steps? Okay. So it's just go up 2000 each time. Yeah. What is that? Like uh, 20% 20 or so, you know, increase whatever it is, 20% week over week uh, from where you're currently at. Well, let's talk about the steps then since we're, since we're talking about that now, the the recommendation here, and this is general again, if you're higher than this already, then you just add in, in a, in a similar fashion. But for those of you that aren't hitting these, the first week you're aiming for 10,000 steps a day. The second week you're aiming for 12,000, the third week, 14,000. And then the, the, the last week, 16,000 steps. So you're, 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 in, you're increasing your step count every single week. This is going to take the place of cardio. This is better than cardio because steps are throughout the day. It's easier to stay consistent with this type of uh, activity. Um, it doesn't, tend to cause the metabolic adaptation in the same way. Um, And it's easier. Now, can you do these steps on a treadmill? You can, uh, but ideally you do them throughout the day and you're just trying to stay active throughout the day and using a treadmill as a way to play catch up. That, okay. So that's, I just love that you added that because that's how I used to use the treadmill was to play catch up if I didn't get there. (laughs) So the goal would be, you know, I wear the Fitbit or Apple watch or a tool to be tracking. I'm mindful all day about where my steps are averaging. And then if I see that I'm behind and I don't have time to maybe go, go somewhere, or I don't see where I'm going to be able to insert that into my day, or maybe I know I'm about to sit down and podcast or do something for five, six hours. I might go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get on the treadmill and I'm going to walk until I get to a certain amount because, and if you, once you do this enough, you start to get, uh, you, you start to figure out your own behaviors of what, what normal days look like, where you'll land, what it looks like if you add a lunch walk for yeah. 20 minutes. Like that's what, what I love about goals like this. It's very insightful. Is, yeah, exa- is more about what you learn yeah. about yourself and your behavior so you can become more cognizant of these, these things that happen when you're not doing this 30 day challenge of like, Oh, I've had one of those days where it's been like, I need to yeah, probably go for a home, walk. Yeah, you get home, your natural tendency, I want to sit down, I want to relax, I want to kind of wind down. And like, so when you start paying attention to like not sitting and not like doing some of those things, like those habits you normally have, it really does like increase just naturally the amount of activity yeah. of the overall day. Yeah, the best ways to hit these are uh, walking after meals, um, housework. Uh, parking farther in the parking lot, using the bathroom that's far away at work. Like these, these little things actually make up a difference, big difference when it comes to these steps. Like I, I know that for me, when I would track something like this, if I was at the grocery store yeah. and I had to go to this over there to find that, I'd take the long way. I'd park further away. And it would make like an extra thousand it's steps Way a day. less noticeable that way. It is. is cool. It's way less. No, it's much more of a lifestyle thing. Yeah. And I just, I would burn more body fat that way than if, by doing a concentrated hour uh, of cardio. All right. Next is this one's again, a diet rela- related one, which is since you're cutting calories, you want to take a majority of these calorie cuts from carbohydrates for the most part. Why? because proteins and fats are more satiating and because we're looking for visible changes in the mirror, carbohydrates tend to cause more water retention, or should I say in the reverse, cutting carbohydrates tends to get rid of water. So burning body fat and getting your body to lose a little bit of water tends to create the illusion of being even even leaner. And carbs tend to be easier to cut without sacrificing, again, proteins, fats, and that kind of stuff, they tend to be easier to cut. And it, get, and it takes you to the next point, which is... Of I mean, I think the simple point of this is just that they're not essential. The other two are. So right. I'm going to keep the other two in the diet the, the longest and the most possible. If, you're, if, we're, if we're doing a cut and we're trying to do it in the, the healthiest way possible... The things that I want to, to probably keep where where my body's used to is my my fats and proteins because they're necessary and carbohydrates are not necessary at all. So 
the first place I'm going to start to pull or manipulate is carbohydrates. And I also think to the point you're making, it, it makes it visually better. I also notice the difference with my appetite. Like, yeah. so if I keep my, my fats and proteins relatively high and I only take the calories from carbohydrates, I actually find it easier to restrict from the foods versus if I take away it from fat or proteins, I find it like you still have those cravings where I think this helps in the craving department also. Yes, 100%. And this takes us to the next one, which is to eat only unprocessed foods. And you got to be very consistent with this. Now, why? Is it because processed foods promote fat gain? Not inherently, but rather processed foods make us overeat. And since you cannot mess up even one day because it's a 30-day period, you want to put all the chips in your favor. And I don't mean potato chips. I mean like chips on a, bar, on a <laughs> yeah. bedding table. So uh, got excited there for a second. So you want to eat only unprocessed foods. So every meal should be made up of whole natural foods, foods where it's one ingredient. So fruits, vegetables, you know, grains that are not super processed, like, uh, you know, like rice, uh, corn, potato, there would be some good starches. Um, and then your, in your meats, your meats, your proteins, and, and that kind of stuff. Only unprocessed food, you'll find that you're going to find more satiety. It'll be easy to stay consistent with that calorie cut that we talked about early on. Without that in processed foods, you may find it to be really challenging. Yeah, I just it. I just think if you're going to be successful and, and you're going to like do this hardcore 30 days, um, becoming aware of everything you're, you're consuming, half of part of that awareness comes from prepping, mm -hmm. prepping, weighing, measuring, getting it all set out and eating all whole foods. And and I, I've shared this on the podcast before, too, which I, what I can't share with you is the science to support this thing that. I definitely saw happen was, I mean, even when, when calories were controlled and I had a diet that had all these, you know, bars and shakes and processed foods that I, uh, I allowed in the diet versus when I went all whole foods there, it presented a different look, you know, now we're talking, we're splitting hairs, uh, the difference, but I saw a difference in it and I found it easier to control the cravings, eat like protein bars, even though they, they fall in the category of healthy, they also would promote me wanting to have more of them. Yeah. So versus me having a you know small serving of of meat and vegetables, that would satiate me and not kick up the craving to where I want again. Where if I'd have a bar, a lot of times I have a bar, I'm like, oh, I want another one, and it's easy to justify. Oh, it's a healthy thing. Let me do one. I more. think part of that has to do with the accuracy of um, when you when you weigh a piece of meat and vegetables and fruit and potato or whatever, you're going to get pretty accurate with the calories. When you look at a package of something that's processed, the FDA actually allows like 10 to 20%. 20. They're pretty loose off. about it. 20%. So, so it lot. says, you know, 100 calories. You could have as much as 120 calories. Mm -hmm. If it's 200 calories, you can have as much as 240 calories. So I think that's probably where it mostly comes from. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's I got to highlight the prep value of that because if you're reaching, you know, like this is where like there's no real margin for error there. And if you have a day where you're hungry and you get like a craving and you're in between uh, and you're traveling and there's only gas station available, whatever it is, like, and you're not prepared and you don't have that food accessible, you're going to compromise it. Well, and to add to what you said, Sal, about the, the accuracy of the number with FDA allowing it to be 20% off when it's. When it's you would, I think you would be silly to think that food companies that are that fall in the health category that are trying to attract people because they're quote unquote low calorie are not going to take advantage of all nineteen point nine percent that they can to sell. I it bet as you a, they're the most inaccurate. I I, I bet I, you because health foods are trying to sell low 100%, calories. One hundred percent. So they're the to, most inaccurate. You have to believe that. You mm -hmm. have to believe if we are selling this product. To, to to people as low calorie and the FDA already allows us this 20% wiggle room, we are going to take advantage of that entire 19.9%. Yeah, because your consumer cares so much about how many That's calories right. in there. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And like you said, something that is two or 300 calories, the difference of it getting to say 40 to 50 calories less it's a big difference of you going like, oh, wow, that's really low. Yeah, that's, that's below bad. 200 calories. Yeah, right? that's it's actually 240 that's calories. That's right. That's not bad at all. You eat three Ooh, of those. It tastes good and it fills me up. Yeah, you yeah, eat three of those. Weird. It's an extra 150 calories a day. That's right. Which, which will definitely throw you off. That's right. All right, the next one is to eat uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight or more. Or more. I'd like to tell people when they're doing something like this to aim for more because at least the, if they do fall below it, they're hitting that target of one to one. Now, this is extremely satiating. 
extremely satiating. When you eat a gram of protein per pound of body weight, you will find your appetite oh. to be gone. It's a bit of a chore. Like, it, I think people don't realize like once they start really upping the protein to that level, um, I mean, you have to actively eat your way through some of that sometimes if you're used to balancing that with a higher amount of carbs. Yeah, and this also um, is better for metabolic adaptation because a high-protein diet you're less likely to pair muscle down. Anytime you cut calories, you always run that risk of pairing muscle down, losing a little bit of muscle in this process. Well, we want to visibly change how we look. That means we want to keep that muscle. Muscle looks good. And a high-protein, low-calorie diet is more likely to, to maintain muscle. Studies are quite clear on this than a lower-protein, low-calorie diet. Even if the calories are the same, the high-protein component protects muscle, which will also protect, to a degree, your metabolism. Because what you don't want to do at the end of this 30-day period is be so bad. And even though we're, we're selling this episode, I st my integrity still prevents me from telling you to do things that are going to set you up so terribly for failure later on. Yeah. So I want you to protect your metabolism. Well, yeah, I think I think we've done enough of that, right, where we explain to people. There's a, very, there's a clear difference when we present information and we're talking about what is healthy, what is best for you, what's a good strategy for this for long-term longevity. And then when we have to do something where we're saying like, okay, you got 30 days, yeah. what are you going to do for 30 days? For, forget what is best for that person or not. It's like, what are the tips that you're going to give? Yeah, and obviously laser focused. you are going to want to lean on the, the higher end, even flirting with maybe a little too much of protein because you don't want to risk going under that because you're not getting the potential maximum benefits of protecting muscle or even potentially building muscle so right. i want to keep my client or this person that we're we're you know this avatar we're building at that that high threshold of protein intake yes next up would be to hit your fiber targets for your body weight you want to hit your fiber targets because fiber is also very satiating fiber's up there not quite as much as protein but it's also very satiating and also a diet that contains an adequate amount of fiber tends to promote fat loss through other somewhat unknown mechanisms. One, some people believe it has to do with the microbiome. I would think other digestive, people, I th it would think it has to do with digestion. No? Yeah, maybe some. Maybe there's more calories burned processing than other types of foods, but fiber's pretty clear. It's pretty good for you. High fiber foods that I like to recommend are things like vegetables and berries. Berries are a phenomenal source, like raspberries and blackberries, it's a great source of fiber and relatively low calorie. That was, that was mm -hmm. your tip, Adam. That's you, my you, staple. Low calorie, like, uh, low glycemic. Yeah. I actually really didn't eat a lot of uh, any other fruit um, during prep than berries. I would I would rotate through all the berries because of the, they're the biggest bang for your buck as far as being the, the lowest calorie for the most amount of antioxidants and fiber that you get from it. So I feel like you're getting the most benefit from it without all the extra calories. And I think they taste good. I mean, blueberries and, and blackberries and raspberries yeah. and strawberries and, you know, they're, and they're all relatively close as far as like which one's better. Um, and I would just do a, a, a mixed bowl of berries to get all my fiber in this way. And I easily digestible too. Easily, Sometimes easily. fiber is like, uh, can, can cause gastro upset in some people, especially insoluble fiber. Well, especially if you're doing something like, you know, raw spinach or something like yep. that. Right. So yep. Yep. next up would be to introduce one higher calorie day a week. Now, what do I mean by higher calorie? This is where you're going to eat closer to what your maintenance is. Now, why are we doing this? This will probably, not always, but probably mitigate the metabolic slowdown that's almost inevitable when you cut your calories. Introducing a higher calorie day tends to do that. Also, psychologically, this is going to give you just enough flexibility to help, help you stay consistent. Hopefully, that's the mm -hmm. goal. Um, and it can also give you the fuel and energy for some of your harder workouts because you are going to be working out during this period of time. So if you have seven days, uh, if you look at your seven-day diet, and you're at a thousand calorie deficit. Maybe, maybe, maybe make one of those like a 200 calorie deficit. So the calories are, are this much is higher. not a cheat day. No, no, I didn't. That's we, why I didn't say that. Yeah, we have to highlight that because um, you know sometimes when people look at that. If I'm up in my calories, what's the difference? If I introduce maybe some processed foods in there, like I kind of get something that I, you know, I had cravings for. Uh, no, this is just to to really stick with the plan of what you have in terms of your macronutrients and, and the types of quality of food and the whole foods, we're just upping that resource a bit more. Yeah. So mine actually was uh, one uh, high calorie day every four days. So I would, I would run a um, low, low, or excuse me, reverse the other way. It would go uh, a high day and then it would go uh, a medium day and then it would go low, low carbohydrate day and yeah. then back to a high. 
So that was kind of how I. Now you had I, so much metabolic flexibility too, because you were, had so much muscle, right? And so yeah. many, you were burning so many calories. Um, I, I would say for, what do you think for most people? Well, I mean, it still lands once a week. One every four is still once a week. I mean, you're, you're roughly doing, yeah. Right? Eight, on the eighth day would be the second one. Yeah, be, so yeah. it's still roughly once a week. That's just the cycle I ran through. I would, See. I would cycle my carbohydrates and I'd have four days where I was eating significantly under my, my caloric maintenance. And then that one day I'd actually go a little bit above maintenance. So whatever I had uh, decided what my, where my maintenance was at, I would go uh, a, a regular day a, a, or a, like a medium like calorie drop and then a, a low, very low, very low, and then back to- Well, so in high. 30 days, that'll give you seven higher calorie days. Once a week, we'll give you four. So you are doing more in that 30-day period. Yeah, in a 30-day period. In a 30-day period, yeah. So I, I'd say you play around with this a little bit, but if I'm thinking of the average person and where their calories are going to be, and they're probably not going to be like you, I would keep it to one. Um, but I mean, you could play around with this a little bit, but the problem is you have 30 days. So I don't know if there's that much wiggle room, right. For somebody to kind of, yeah, I mean, around. I, of course this goes back to the original statement of the, 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 the better you are, the better place you are like metabolically, uh, the more wiggle room that you're totally. going to have, the more, the more you'll build flexibility that you'll be able to play with different days like this. I mean, nothing stops the average person from having like, instead of doing my cycle of going, you know, they have, you know, three like medium low days, you know, two very, very low days. And then that's true. One maintenance and a slight surplus. So you can absolutely play with like what that looks like. I just found that that rotation was a nice rotation. Yeah, And to be me. clear, mine would be similar to yours. That's how right. I tend to do mine. Yeah. All right. Next up, let's talk about working out, um, lift weights, three days a week, full body. Now, why are we recommending that? Because you're at a calorie deficit, probably not a good idea to lift weights all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and three days a week, full body gives you enough frequency. It focuses, tends to focus on compound lifts, and it tends to send a really loud muscle building strength signal, mm -hmm. which will minimize the potential muscle loss that can happen during a calorie deficit period. So a full body three day a week routine for this 30 day period probably works best. Each workout should focus on like one exercise per body part and make it compound lift focus. We want most bang for our buck. We're not in the gym to waste time. We also are low energy because of the calories are so low. So we're not trying to do a bunch of filler exercises. You want to go in there, you want to squat, you want to press, you want to press overhead, you want to row, you know, lunge. You want to do those kinds of movements to really maximize uh, the type of work and that if, you're doing. And if you want to do more, it is on the off days. It's mobility, trigger, and walking. Yes, yeah. like that. So restorative movement, right? Yeah. So like we're going to hit the weights hard three days, full body, and then that. And if you we want to do, I want to keep this person moving and active. We only got thirty days, right? And so those other days, we're messing with mobility walking and trigger sessions. And I give them a lot of flexibility. That's obviously the one thing I always got to remind people is trigger sessions are not like workouts. They're these, these small pump and do three, four of those little yeah, micro, yeah. you know, pumping uh, band workouts throughout the day. I'm totally fine with that. Go for a nice walk, do a nice 30 minute to 45 minute mobility session. Like you stay active, stay active and do those types of things on the off day. But as far as, you know, the intensity, the high intensity, like weight training, pushing yourself, limit that to, which by the way, is sounds counterintuitive. Like most people well, would think- Well, shouldn't you do more? Yeah, most people would think, yeah, okay. Check yourself on that's that. That's right. And and I think that, that this is a, a mistake that a lot of people make is hammering the shit out of themselves five to seven days a week. And then their body's constantly trying to recover from that. It's not adapting and helping you Same out. Same in the actual workouts, right? Is the tendency because we're trying to really accelerate our progress because we got this 30 day window, I'm going to want to keep going to the next exercise, the next exercise. We're not getting adequate rest in between. We change the dynamic of the entire workout from being a strength driven workout to now a little bit more cardiovascular based. And so we do need that strength signal. We need that signal so we can. And build you muscle. want it to be loud to build muscle, allow the, the movement activity and the calorie deficit to take care of the fat burning. Yeah. Do not go into your lifting days as I'm trying to burn fat. No, you're trying to build muscle. You're trying to build muscle. And so lift to build muscle, stay active, be disciplined on your deficit, to make your 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 fat burning. Think that's of it right. like that as you approach your working that's out. A good, that's a good tip. And then uh, you want to also prioritize sleep every day. One night of missed sleep will wreak havoc on your hormone system, will change your cravings. 
affect your workouts negatively. So that means for the next 30 days, you're not going to stay up late Friday night and try and sleep in Saturday morning. That is not prioritizing sleep. That's giving yourself jet lag yeah. every single week. And that also has negative consequences. So this means every night, go to bed at the same time. And every morning, wake up at the same time. This is not an afterthought, by the way. So you, if you listen to all these tips, you're like, ah, oh, that sleep part, I'll leave that out. Yeah. No, the sleep part is one of the most important tips that we just gave you. Every single night, go to bed at the same time. Every single morning, wake up at the same time. It'll make a huge difference with this particular goal. This is something where, you know, I made the point when we first started talking about how I like this for like 30 days to um, be so disciplined that you make a lot of other sacrifices that if I was coaching you towards longevity and health that I would probably tell you like, listen, I mean, that's a, that's a time you enjoy with your wife on Friday nights. You should go have that dinner out and you guys do those mm -hmm. things. Or, you know, you you haven't seen a friend that you haven't seen in years and, and, and Saturday you guys get together and you stay up and you, right. you have a, a glass of scotch. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you should enjoy that every now and then. Those things are important to your relationship and your, and your overall health. But here's an example of where like, you know, I have you ever, sacrificed all those things for 30 days to make sure you get the most optimal sleep ever to see how much it actually makes a benefit. It's also going to bring so much awareness that's around what, how much it impacts. That's what I mean. That's why yeah. I like this is this like 30 day get after it. Like really like give yourself that opportunity to like, like what if I did turn down these things that I really want to do and these things that I, I I have these temptations or stay up later to watch a show I really wanted to watch about like sacrifice that stuff for just 30 days and really make this like dis effort, discipline effort to get in bed by a, a really early time and get really good night's sleep just to see what kind of impact and you how much it can influence this. You want to know what's funny? Knowing the average person, considering the average person, of all of these single steps that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. This is one of the hardest. The one that would make the biggest difference in 30 days would be this one. It's also one of the hardest. That's why I'm, yes. making, impact. It, that's yes, why I'm making such a big deal about it because I know I've trained enough people to know and I know myself, this is hard. Yeah. It is hard to be really, really good every single night about having a, a, a routine where you get in the bed and getting in bed every single night. And if it's 11 or midnight, that's not a good routine, you know, like getting into bed early. So you get a good eight hours of sleep and, or more, and you're well rested to get up and start your day at, and consistently at that time. That's hard to do. That is all right. Next, this is the last one. And because we have a 30 day period, so this is not like how you're going to live your entire life. But because the goal is to make the most visible changes in 30 days, that means zero alcohol, zero, zero junk food, zero anything that could counter this, this goal. So that means there's no wiggle room. So we talked about consistency in the beginning. That's it for 30 days. You're not doing any of those things because all of those things can impact all the other steps that we talked about. You could have some alcohol, not affects your sleep, not affects your cravings, now your diet's off, your workout's off, whatever. Do nothing that could be off or that could set you off and you will see visible changes in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 